talk about it with the viewers. It's a story that we discussed yesterday afternoon when okay. I had Andrew Hasman up here. Yep. But it's a story that a lot of people are talking about nationally now. So we had that okay. huge story, um, you know, last week with mm -hmm. the protests at the mosque yep. on Friday. Yeah. You know, a lot of people tuning in to see what was going to happen with that. And there was one story that really stood out. And that story was the story about Jason Ledger. Yeah. That is such a great story. We were talking about it, and I was right. amazed, but I think it's so cool. I have just a quick thought on this, then I'll run. One is that I think it's really cool that people's hearts can be changed over their prejudices um, by being at least open-minded enough to talk to someone who's different from them. Right. I so think that's a talking cool about thing. a guy who was wearing one of the F Islam shirts. Right. At the rally last week. And who was like a big spokesman for it. Right. He was a, one of the main guys being interviewed very, the whole time. Yeah, very he was so, close yeah. to the organizer. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he accepted an invitation right. from the mosque to attend their evening prayer. From a couple of people who I think were attendees at the mosque. I don't think it was like from the top guy. Right, people but, at the mosque. Yeah, they're like, and come so, on in, just come on in and see what we're really all about. That kind of a thing. Right, and so he did. Mm -hmm. And Andrew covered the story yesterday. I'm going to first play <laughs> Andrew's story that yeah. aired on the six o'clock newscast yeah. and then after that wraps I am going to play the full raw interview so it's about 15 minutes and it includes the interview that Andrew did with Jason as well as Jason's uncle yeah so I'm gonna play that for you guys here okay um, which boy, I wish there was some way to literally get the word out all over the country that you're gonna do that because th this is exclusive to us this is, exclusive this is to a us. 15 minute interview that shows you how he could have a change of heart I think some of the protesters, honestly, Samia, were a little bit surprised at how many people in the community who weren't Muslim, could have been atheist or any other religion, came out and said, we are going to support our friends. Right. Our Most neighbors. of the people in attendance there on the pro-love side yeah. weren't Muslim. It was a lot of people yeah. carrying signs talking about Jesus uh -huh. with Bible quotes, just or sure. you know, signs that extend you know, peace offerings, Correct. things like that. And yesterday, I know they had an interfaith event there, at the mosque can, last night. Can, and Rachel, one of our regular viewers, actually okay. attended. There is that right, Rachel? Yeah, That's she was really tweeting cool. me some photos. There is actually. a huge interfaith um, organization and movement here in the valley mm -hmm. that has, I would say, most of the various faiths represented. And it, the whole idea is like, hey, sure, we're all different, but that's part of America is that we all come from our own different beliefs, we all come from our own different uh, racial backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, well, uh, religious beliefs, and somehow we all, it all works. Well, that's the thing, if you think about, go back to your history books, and I'm glad I have you here for this. Um, if you go back to what America's founded on, yeah. why did people leave in the first place? Right. So they could have that freedom of religion. Right. That's why they came here, you know? That's right. So if you think about the basis for the founding of this country, right. well, then you kind of, it doesn't mean just like freedom of religion for this one group then. Correct. Because Although, then it I would say the Puritans tried to have that. <laughs> <laughs> they came over here and they were very puritanical. I'm just and saying. <laughs> still. It's but hypocritical. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's still your right. I'm just okay. saying. I better go, but... Pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. So I'm going to play the story that aired in the 6 o'clock newscast last night so you kind of have the overview, the two-minute piece Good. that Andrew did. Okay. And then I will play that extended interview for all of you guys who want to hear everything that Jason Ledger has to say. A valley man who went to a rally outside of Phoenix Mosque on Friday to protest Islam has a change of heart somewhat. Went to the event where armed demonstrators spoke out against the Muslim faith. But after being invited inside the mosque, he says the congregation made him feel welcome. Andrew has been live outside the Islamic Community Center of Phoenix where a different rally is getting underway tonight. Andrew. That's right, Troy. More on that rally in a minute. But you remember the scene out here on Friday. You wouldn't expect someone to be invited inside the mosque, but that is what happened. And he told us today that after going in there, he now has a very different perspective. 
Here's Jason Ledger and the organizer of Friday's rally wearing the profanity laced t shirts. Now, things have changed. Out of respect for the Islamic people, knowing what I know now, since I have talked to them and spoke with them, no, no, I would not do that again. Um, just because I, I don't want to offend or hurt those people. While at Friday's rally, Ledger spoke with a group of people who pray at the mosque, and he was invited inside. But when I took a second to sit down and listen to them and actually enter their mosque and go in and watch some of their prayers, it, it was a beautiful thing, and they answered some of my questions that I had. Ledger attended the rally with his uncle. For them, going was more about free speech than religion. We don't have to like everything that's free in speech in this world, you know, but we do have to let it happen. You know, we do have to let people wear what they want, say what they want. Ledger and his uncle say they've been invited back to the mosque for more discussions and they plan to go. This time, the T-shirt will stay at home. I feel that me and a few people like my Uncle Paul and the Muslim people taking time to talk to each other, I feel that we change the thoughts of some people and they change the thoughts of me. Paul specifically said, I will never wear that shirt again. I made my point, all right? The point was that even the most vile speech is protected under the First Amendment, okay? That was the point I was trying to make. And tonight's rally is being organized by a group, uh, a number of religious groups. They're coming here to the mosque and holding what they're calling a love, not hate rally. That rally is set to get underway in about 30 minutes. Reporting live in Phoenix, I'm Andrew Hasbun, Fox 10 News. Andrew, thank you. The organ All right. Again, that was the story that Andrew Hasbun did last night in regards to that interview with Jason Ledger. I'm now going to play that full interview for you guys. Again, for those of you who just tuning in, I'm playing the extended raw interview with Jason Ledger. There are a couple parts where you see an edit, and that's just because we had to adjust audio uh, things and fix the mic when there was wind. But other than that, it is the full interview with him. It's about 15 minutes long and includes that interview with Jason Ledger as well as his uncle who you saw in that piece. So let me just pull that up for you guys now. And just give me a second. All right, here it is. Tell us why you wanted to be part of the rally on Friday. Okay, I wanted to be part of the rally because I believe in the rights and freedoms in America. Um, I do not believe in anything that was said on my shirt at all. I went because in America we have the right of freedom of speech and I felt I have the right to wear that shirt. So for you it was more, it wasn't so much an anti-Islam thing, it was a free speech thing. Yeah, no, it, it was nothing against Islam. I, I don't know enough about any kind of religion to have a problem with any religion. Whatever religion makes you a good person, that's the religion for you. I went because I have the right to wear that shirt without having my life threatened or feel I'm in danger because I have a silly shirt on with a silly statement. Before we get to going inside the mosque and all that stuff, so what would you want to say to someone who is Islam, is Islamic and takes offense, or is Muslim and takes offense to that shirt? Look, I guess all I want to say is in a sense is, look, I, I love all people. I have no problem with your religion. Maybe you should just take it as, as more of a joke than anything because the world is full of people that, that don't make sense and you may get offended at something they say, but it doesn't have to be drawn to a level of violence or anything like that. So when you're out there, what, what struck you the most when you're out at the rally? You know, what struck me the most honestly was when I took a minute to actually talk to some of the Muslim people to find out, you know, they are just like me and I am uneducated on their religion. You know, I could easily make as many mistake judgment calls as any other person out there. Um, but when I took a second to sit down and listen to them and um, actually enter their mosque and go in and watch some of their prayers, it, it was a beautiful thing. And they answered some of my questions that I had. And uh, I just feel that maybe that, that's something that they, they should do too for the people. A lot, of, a lot of us are uneducated, you know? Educate us on your religion. Let us know that not everybody's a bad, bad person. Question again. Okay. From, uh, so what struck you the most, would you say, about, about your time out there on Friday? What struck me the most is definitely when I took a minute to talk to the Islamic people. You know, just to find that they, they are people just like us. I mean, they are American citizens. And um, to sit there and to listen to what they had to say in their religion and answer the, they answered some of my questions. I mean, I found that to open up my eyes. And I think that if they took the time to do that with more people, that, it, that more people would have their eyes open to their religion and what it's all about. 
um, what kind of questions did you have for them? I, I just had some basic questions, you know, um, some questions about their women and um, why they separate them and stuff like that and, and how it works in the prayer sessions with the women. You know, I'm, I know that they weren't supposed to be in the same rooms. That's, that's, the, that's just how uneducated I was. I mean, just the little stuff I knew that they weren't supposed to be in the same rooms or their women's covered up. I asked them about that and they answered my questions on that kind of stuff. You know, there was reasons behind all of it that made sense that weren't as, you know, as vague as, as I've known them to be. Um, would you say misconceptions or? Yeah. Fair or yes. Yes. So, I mean, a, a lot of misconceptions. I mean, they, they definitely wanted to let me know that they do treat their women very, very well. Maybe even better so than a lot of people here in America, which I, which I wouldn't doubt, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions on what they do and how they treat their women. Women. I mean, and, and it, it's after they explain it to me, it does seem like, you know, I was misled or my thoughts on it weren't correct just from maybe what I've read in the media and, you know, just from what I've learned here because I haven't taken any time to actually learn anything about the religion. So how did the going in come about? Tell me how that went down. Well, like I said, I, I was standing there talking with them. Uh, you know, there was a group of us. I was listening to their stories and how some of them got here from their countries. And they invited me in. They asked if I'd like to come in. I said I would like to come in and watch a prayer. So I did, and I'll, I'll tell you, I, it was it was a beautiful thing. I watched something beautiful, you know. Why? Why do you say that? Well, because what I watched is I watched a bunch of people come together. You know, they seemed very united. Everybody did the same thing. You know, very respectful, kneel down before their God that they believe in. You know, and it was a peaceful. It was a peaceful prayer. I mean, they they prayed in in uh, an Islamic tongue, which I didn't understand. But the gentleman next to me was was very nice and answered a lot of my questions about it. You know, which which I needed. You know, I, I needed to be educated. Uh, and you ran into an old friend. You feel comfortable talking about that? I, I did. I did. I ran into a friend of mine. Ronald, I'll say his first name, yes. I a neighbor? Yeah, my neighbor. I grew up with him, and um, it was great to see him. Me and him hugged and talked about old times, and, uh, you know, there, there was no animosity from him to me or from me to him. So did you know growing up that he was Muslim, or was this something that happened to him later in life? No, I believe he also converted. It happened later in life. I mean, he was a lot like me and made some wrong decisions, and he found his way to make, to better his life. And, and for that, I applaud him. I, I, I don't care what religion he found. If, if you've bettered your life, you're better for society. I, he, I applaud that. Was he upset with you for being there? No, no, you know, not at all. Like, what are you doing? No, here? I mean, he, he only asked me once, and I told him that purely why I was there, why I had the shirt on, mm -hmm. and and you know, he smiled at me, gave me a hug, and said, "Man, I respect that," I, you know, because he didn't know either. He was uneducated on my thoughts as well until I educated him. So, how would you say that going in and seeing them and talking to? to those people there changed your perceptions? You know, like I said, a lot of it, how nice they were to me. I mean, really, they, they, they didn't hold any judgment, and that's what I wanted. I wanted them not to hold any judgment because of a silly shirt I was wearing, because the truth is it was just a shirt, and I did tell them I didn't know anything about their religion. And the way they opened, you know, welcomed me with open arms, they invited me and my Uncle Paul back to uh, 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 join in their prayer and ask any questions that we may have, they would gladly answer for us. I mean, th that's what struck me amazing about the people, is once I came inside, there was no hostility, there was no anger like what was going on outside with both people. It was civil. It was very civil, yeah. I mean, you would expect that given the situation that some, they probably wouldn't invite you I mean this is not something you expected to happen going out there no no you know look I, I didn't know what to expect to go out there all I, I all I expected was that I was gonna come home alive regardless of what t-shirt I was wearing um, but no I didn't know what to expect and I didn't and, and when they invited me I was honored actually and, and I didn't even hesitate I, I gladly walked in there and joined them so no, now after all this Would you do it again? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Out of respect for the Islamic people, knowing what I know now, since I have talked to them and spoke with them, no, no, I would not do that again. Um, just because I, I don't want to offend or hurt those people, okay? But do I think people should not wear that kind of shirt? No, absolutely not. I mean, I'm not going to ever tell the next guy or hurt the next guy if he wants to wear that shirt. I think it should all be taken as a grain of salt, man. Life is not that serious. It doesn't need to be come to anger and everybody's news media attention over it. You know, I just think that it just, we all just need to love each other, you know? And so what, what is the message that you hoped was being sent? 
out of out of everything that happened Friday? What was the message that you personally wanted to get out and that got misconstrued? Mm -hmm. You know, the main thing that, that, I, that got misconstrued, of course, is the T-shirt I was wearing, okay? And again... You, you weren't the only one wearing it. I wasn't. It, and that's what started it, like that, when, when Jace, was his, what's his name again? The guy that, uh, John. Was John, when he was on the side of the road, that's kind of what started it all. That is what started yeah. it, yes. Look, I'm a firm believer in the right to be able to wear a shirt just like that, or any shirt you want without being hurt. That That's my whole point of it. And the biggest thing I got out of all this is when I started actually talking to them, I let them know that too, that this is the reason why I'm here. I'm here because wearing this shirt because I want you guys to look at it for what it is. It's a silly t-shirt. I don't even believe what it says. I didn't believe what it says when I went there. I just wore it as a, as, as, as a protest to my freedom of speech because whether people like it or not, we, we ha everybody has the right to be an idiot in this country and we have to we have to be okay with that we have to try to help and educate and not hurt those people that are idiots you know that's that's how i feel so i know you've heard the, the argument i know you've heard it said a million times but people will come and, and see that and say well just because it's free speech doesn't mean it's a good idea so just give me a response to, to that sort of <clears throat> that mentality that mindset i think that maybe those people are a little too sensitive okay that's what i really think i think maybe that's more of a personal problem you know you don't like it i don't like it but that doesn't mean the right that doesn't mean those people don't have the right to do it okay we don't have to like everything that's free in speech in this world you know but we do have to let it happen you know we do have to let people wear what they want say what they want i don't feel like it's antagonizing i just think that's somebody else's percep uh, perception of it were you surprised that they were they were willing to let you in and be so open? No, not really. Um, not really, because, like I said, once I started talking to them, they're people too, just like us. Okay, and um, I wasn't really surprised by the fact that they would openly invite me in. You know, I, I was happy, honored, and enjoyed it, and I, I was glad that they did. Yeah. La last question for you: um, Just why do you why do you even want to, to talk about this? Why do you want to get your message out? I want to talk about this because I feel that a lot of the media paints it one way. I want the media to understand that it wasn't a bunch of hate mongols there. You know, I, I, I'm not a hateful person. I'm not a racist. I have no problem with religion. I was there for one reason, and a lot of people were there for that reason. But I do want everybody to be educated on religion before they make judgments of people. I definitely do want that. I think everybody should be educated on anything that they may make a judgment on. Anything else you want to add? Anything else you feel like you want to get out there? What do you What do you think, Paul? Anything else? Open oh, wide. <sighs> you know what? I, I think you, you pretty much nailed it, man. They, you know, that they're all this evidence they had that people were there for freedom of speech, and you didn't see a damn bit of it. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, I mean I, I, how many times was I interviewed, Jay? How many times? Dude? You, you know, a, a ton. And, and that's the thing I do. I do kind of want to get out is look more into the to what it was for a lot of people i mean there wasn't just me sharing that ideology there was a lot of people there that were there for free speech you saw the bat on both sides i was there i seen people on the muslim side screaming yelling racist things at the people on the other side and i saw the same thing from the people on this side screaming it but it was again it was a handful and groups of people doing it to each other there was a lot of people on both sides that said nothing including myself i never once screamed anything at those at them they never you know nobody really necessarily screamed in my face just in my direction but there was when i was sitting there looking over there i saw lots of people just doing the same thing i was doing now, were you the only one that went inside i was the only one that went inside were the you, mosque were you the only one invited or you're the only one who said yes they invited me as well. yeah yeah i guess i'm the only one that said yes i maybe some other people were invited i i am the only one that went inside besides some uh, there were some pastors from another church okay. that were in there as well John, John actually talked to the Muslim. Oh, right? Well, I was going to get my, on my tripod. But... Oh. Why wouldn't you wear it again? Because I, I made my point, all right? The point was that even the most vile speech is protected under the First Amendment, okay? That was the point I was trying to make. I don't know enough about Islam to hate Islam, all right? So when I started talking to those guys at the fence, all right, I went over there and asked them, hey, look, you know, this is what we're hearing, and you're telling me that 
that that isn't true, that the, that's, you know, it's, they're twisting your words. Uh, that's what they said. ISIS is twisting their words, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, well, we don't know that. I mean, you know, I'm an American. I don't know anything about that. So when we started talking and they were saying the same things, hey, look, we hate ISIS as much as you do. All right. They're killing more Muslims than there are Americans. And that's a fact. So once we started talking, and, and I asked him if I could write some questions down, and they would answer them for him, and a guy named Ali, he's the president of the, the community center, he said, yeah, please, come back. He would be glad to answer them. So Jay and I are going back on Friday, and we're going to sit down and ask some questions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and try to get some answers about some stuff. Because, look, you know, this is about freedom of speech. They have every right to pray to whatever God they want, okay? That's America. That's how it goes, okay? So... You know, it, it, the, 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 the depressing thing for me was that all that stuff, all those discussions, were, someone took video of them, all right, and we never, you won't see a darn syllable of it, mm -hmm. okay? That's, that's what's embarrassing to me, all right? You're supposed to be a free press, but you only, it's like they're trying to paint a picture. You well, know. sometimes the loudest voices drown out. The well, others. I mean, I agree. You know, I understand that. But you know what? If you want the whole story and the truth, if that's what you're really after, then why wouldn't you put something up there like that? People were there trying to work out their differences with discussion. We weren't yelling or screaming or cussing or saying bad things about each other. Mm -hmm. And did that make TV? No, of course not. It is now. Well, thank God, you know, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, we were trying to have a discussion about free speech, all right? And we did. We went, Jason, man, we went over there and started talking to those guys. And he's right. They were people just like us, all right? They were courteous. They were nice. They explained that, that this is all a big misunderstanding. And, 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 you know, I can't call them liars. I don't know anything about Islam. So mm -hmm. I'm going to write some questions down, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to ask them. And I'm going to sit there and listen to their answers because they have as much right to, to answer those questions, I mean, instead of somebody screaming hateful things at them, I'm going to ask them some serious questions. I mean, does, isn't that what it's supposed to be about? Mm -hmm.